Hello and welcome to another Josh Plays 4K painting tutorial. Today I will be painting a termagant for High Fleet Leviathan. Uh, and this is one of the new termagant designs from the uh, Leviathan box set launched with 10th edition. Uh, I know I have uh, already got one tutorial uh, on the channel uh, of me painting a termagant in the uh, Leviathan paint scheme. Uh, but I thought uh, I would just give it a quick refresh uh, along with the uh, new design of the model. I thought this might sort of complement that uh, and uh, be a slightly different uh, sort of style to the uh, video we've seen before. So uh, without further ado, let's grab some brushes and get started. So as you can see here, we've got the miniature built and primed in Wraithbone spray, uh, just giving that nice sort of warm undercoat ready for us to start applying those colours. And the first one we're going to do is the Leviathan Purple uh, contrast paint, and this is for all of the carapace areas of the miniature. Uh, so looking here, that's the uh, most of the obviously the back part of the model, so where all this armouring is here. Uh, and then also uh, sort of working the way down the, the tail and the spine, obviously being careful with these little sort of nodes on the uh, on the spines on the tail here because there's not uh, any of the plating underneath when you get to that far end. Uh, obviously then not forgetting the uh, crest on the top of the head uh, as well as the uh, tops of the legs here as well. Obviously be careful not to get anything on the skin if you can help it, but the beauty of doing this uh, as early on as we are is that if we do make any mistakes uh, we can just tidy up again with the wraith bone from the pot uh, and that's uh, obviously a huge bonus when working with such dark colours. And uh, without not forgetting as well on the weapon itself uh, there's the uh, sort of slight bit of panelling here on this side and the, uh, the very sort of front part as well. So do take your time to work your way around the model and, uh, and get this done. Obviously depending on how many uh, uh, miniatures you're doing at a time. If you're batch painting these, uh, for instance, uh, you may find this to be probably the most time-consuming part of the uh, of the painting for these miniatures. Uh, but uh, do take your time. Obviously, the the more accurate you are, the less tidying up you're going to have to do, and ultimately, uh, the faster it may actually then become. So uh, work your way around the model, and then we can move on to the next stage. Once you're happy with that purple, next thing we're going to do is shade all of the skin areas. And for this, we're going to do a three part Magos purple to contrast medium mix. Uh, and then we are just simply going to apply this all over the miniature, uh, in, including uh, the head, uh, all the limbs. You don't have to worry too much if you get it onto the areas that are going to be uh, colored for the claws uh, as uh, the uh, contrast paint we're going to use for that is quite dark and will cover this up. So uh, just take your time, make sure you uh, get into all the recesses but don't let it pool too much uh, as uh, otherwise it will then become sort of quite clumpy and, and dark which is not what we want, we just want a nice sort of smooth coat over the top of this skin to uh, give it that nice sort of pinky feel. Well, once you've got that skin shade applied, the next thing we're going to do is a mix of Volupus Pink and Contrast Medium, and this is going to be a one-to-one -one mix. And this is to pick out the more recessed sort of skin areas on the miniature, uh, and particularly the uh, vents uh, in the skin. So uh, like this one on the arm here, for instance, uh, you're going to obviously want quite a small brush and try and be as neat as possible. It can be a bit tricky to tidy this up if uh, you do go over the edge but you've usually got enough play just to get some water uh, onto it and uh, wipe it away before it starts to dry and stain so do take your time and uh, work your way around that it's also worth putting this in the uh, sort of open cracks of the skin as well so like behind the uh, obviously the, the leg joint here uh, and above the uh, the feet as well just to give those areas a bit more definition away from the standard sort of lighter uh, pale skin. So pick out all the areas that you want to be uh, a little bit more prominent uh, and let that fully dry and then we can move on to the next stage. Once you're happy with those skin shades we're going to move on to blocking in the next major colour which is of course the claws and the weapons and for this we're going to use Flesh Terrors Red. 
and uh, and we're going to do, take this obviously straight from the pot as a contrast paint uh, rather than diluting it. Uh, and you're going to want a, a reasonably sort of small tip brush just to keep your uh, obviously neatness around the model now that we've got those other uh, shades on. Uh, but uh, just take your time, work your way around the claws, uh, obviously the hoofs as well. Obviously try not to uh, touch the sort of decorative uh, skin work around the uh, around the edges there. Obviously the back claws here as well, and then most importantly the flesh borer weapon on the front. Now uh, as you'll obviously have seen the, the weapon itself has the vents that we've just put in with the Volupus pink. Uh, so do take your time to work your way around. Don't worry too much if you get the flesh terrors red into the uh, sort of eye of the weapon. I'm not sure if the camera's picked that up but there's that sort of yellow eye on there. Uh, don't worry too much about that because we uh, can recoat that with Wraithbone before putting in the uh, yellow shade to that. So obviously do take your time when you go around the uh, obviously the finger holes where the uh, the other hand joins in with the model uh, and the weapon. So uh, but uh, so I think that will be the main focus of your time, but otherwise do work your way around and let that fully dry before moving on to the next step. Well, once you're happy with that flesh tear is red, we're going to move on to a little bit of skeleton hoard and this is just to pick out the teeth of the miniature. Now if you are painting one of the ones with an open mouth uh, then uh, you can still obviously coat the teeth with this but I would also recommend doing the tongue with Volupus pink uh, so that uh, it sort of matches the rest of the uh, sort of skin tone of the model uh, and then when you get to highlighting I would recommend highlighting that up with a little bit of Emperor's Children. And then as the last shade, we're going to use a little bit of Gilliman flesh. And this is to pick out those uh, pipes and cables coming out of the back of the arm with the gun uh, attached to it. So uh, so these, so this cable under here, for instance, that then connects into the rest of the hand uh, and the one directly above. So give that a nice sort of even coat uh, to get the uh, detail picked out with that. Once you've got all those shades applied and they've dried, we're going to move on to doing some highlighting. Now, I have also, just before we could do this, uh, fixed on the gun any parts that the red got to that uh, you wouldn't want to do. Uh, so that includes the uh, the eye here and the, and the fingers as well uh, on the top there if you've got anything on there. So for the highlights of the skin, we're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh. Uh, and this is really just to pick out the sort of highest and raised areas of the uh, of the body itself uh, anything that would sort of catch the light you want to be a little bit more sort of prominent uh, to the rest of the uh, of the model uh, so any sort of tops of the muscles here for instance uh, anywhere where you can sort of accentuate the uh, the, the detailing that we've created by uh, by the shade so the tips of uh, the uh, sort of gaps here in the flesh as well so uh, obviously take your time work your way around the model pick out any areas that you want to do. You can do sort of as much or as little of this as you like because obviously the shading uh, that we've done here gives, gives good highlighting already to the model. Uh, so this step isn't, isn't crucial, uh, but it does help just uh, obviously separate the model in terms of the finish. So next up we're going to uh, start working on the highlighting of that purple. And um, for the first highlight we're going to do here is Jean Steeler purple. Uh, and this is uh, obviously to do over the uh, the carapace of the model. And for this technique, we're going to do uh, what is called feathering. Uh, and this is where you have a, a nice sort of fine tip to your brush. Uh, and then you pick a certain sort of area. So if, uh, for instance here, for, for ease of showing you, I'll choose the, the back panels here and the, and the scaling. Uh, and what you're going to do is sort of gently just draw little lines down the armour. Just like that, and uh, and you're going to work that all all over the miniature in terms of where the where the purple is, and uh, and do try and be as neat as you can. Now you can make the lines a little sort of bolder if you want to, or or thinner depending on the sort of style of brush you're going for. Uh, but you want to sort of take your time, just sort of work your way across this, uh, and it will really start to uh, just make that pop out a little bit further, and uh, and give a nice sort of texture to the uh, to the purple as well. So uh, work your way around that and then we can work on to the next stage. You'll want to do it on all of the purple, so including the slats going down the knees and the head crest as well, including the front of the gun too. 
So the second highlight we're going to add to that purple is a layer of slanesh grey. Now we're going to use this in a couple of different ways. So first of all we're going to go back to the feathering technique that we've just done with Gene Steeler Purple. Uh, and instead of being so sort of broad with the lines, we're going to make them very small, very concise uh, at the very tips of each of these panels. So, for example, just on this one here, you're just going for the very, very tips just to add a little bit of depth uh, and layer to the jeans to the purple. And we're just going to gently work our way around all those panels we did before and, uh, and just do that as well. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to use this as an edge highlight as well. So sort of picking out the sort of sharpest edges of, uh, of any of the purple corners. So for example, on the tops of these sort of spines here, for instance, uh, and also down the middle of any crest. So for example, the head here uh, has a, a nice sort of crest going down the middle of it. And we're just going to gently sort of run our brush along the edges of that and just pick out that line, which again, just helps break up that purple in tow and also obviously any particular edges that we might have as well so around the tops of the arm here we can uh, gently sort of layer with that and, and at the back here as well and then also down the sides of the uh, of the knee pad so again take your time work your way around the model and then we can come back for the next stage once you're happy with those purple highlights, we're going to move on to highlighting up the red now. And for the first part of this, we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're just going to use this to sort of layer over the top of that flesh tear is red, uh, just to uh, create a little bit of brightness and, uh, and differential between the two tones. So sort of picking out sort of sharp edges uh, and good sort of points of, uh, of content to uh, obviously draw the focus uh, onto those red areas. Next up, we're going to move on to a highlight of Wild Rider Red. Uh, and this is uh, similar to how we done with the Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, picking out the same sort of points as you did before, but instead of coating as far up or into that area as you did with the Evil Suns, we're just gonna point our brush a little bit sort of further down and onto the uh, sort of sharp edges of that, uh, just to create a nice sort of smooth gradient uh, in and between those, those colors. And then as a final highlight, we're going to use a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange. And this is just for the sharpest of edges for the miniature. Uh, so particularly looking at uh, the claws here, for instance, we're literally just going to point, put our brush right at the very tips and the sides just to really make those stand out and pop amongst the rest of the model. So uh, this will be used quite sparingly because it is incredibly bright. Uh, against the rest of the red, but we're literally just picking out any of the strongest edges and uh, and picking out the very tips of those as well. So uh, work your way around and uh, and then we can move on to the next stage. And then to finish this model off, we are going to get a little bit of iodine yellow, and this is for the eyes. So uh, just get a small brush and uh, just a little bit on the very tip of that. Uh, of uh, as well and then just gently run your brush into the eye socket and just a little bit below as well just to help give that sort of glow effect on the eyes uh, hopefully you can see this on the uh, on the camera but uh, just uh, then you get a nice sort of alien glow around the top of the mouth and uh, that will be the model finished so with uh, all those colors applied now the only thing left to do is do the basing on the model is whichever way best uh, sort of fits your army and there we have a finished tyranid termagant uh, for high fleet leviathan ready to go and collect all the biomass and defeat any of the enemies in its path uh, i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, please leave a like or a comment below if there's any questions you have uh, and please subscribe for more content to come thank you